Um, welcome back to the 12th man. Delighted to be joined by Emmett Little. It's back on the show. We better use it on ATM Emmett. You haven't got Zach. Um, Cotton O'Ree really and Tony that Liverpool are a small club. So you're a bit more relaxed tonight. Um, but we are going to be chatting about your voice. Um, a 98 year old record was smashed at the weekend. Um, we're going to be looking at Spurs as well. Obviously, a lot of talk around Spurs the minute we do as you know. And Nagelsmann's been rumoured to be top target in the summer. We're also going to be looking at Mikel Arteta's Arsenal. Um, and we're hearing a lot of talk about this process, but is it enough? Is the process really working at all with Arsenal? Um, and we're also going to be looking ahead to the Champions League games this week and getting some predictions on. But Emmett, absolutely delighted to have you back on. Um, again, probably not in the best circumstances, but um, good to have you on and Ryan. I'm delighted to hear um, that you have a few times they get off your chest line as well. Hi. Uh, Thanks, Gary. Thanks for having me back on. Hey? Um, you're right. Uh, you're, you're sitting in the dark. You're right, Dai. Hey. You sitting in the dark. <laughs> sitting in the dark since the weekend, since Saturday night, Dai. I say you haven't come round from since the, the game on Saturday night, and that's where we're going to start in with. Um, obviously going into the game. Um, a lot of people say form was like the window in derby games, and Liverpool do have that psychological edge over Everton, especially at Anfield. Um, Everton haven't won there well they hadn't won there since 1999 and everyone sort of associates Everton with maybe a similar mentality Spurs where they don't really turn up in the big games and big games pass them by and stuff so even I went on the fall of confidence and a lot of the fans I were talking they were still confident that they would, they would win and I certainly did I thought I think I predicted 4-1 um, and obviously I was re- really wrong but um how, how did you how did you feel going into the game before you get into the game? How did you feel? Did you did you sense that it was a, it was a game over four than I won? Um, I thought they were going to win, but I didn't want to like I wasn't at the same time I wasn't really confident about it. Yeah. Um, because of the previous matches that we had at Anfield, but um, it was just after the first goal always you know makes a game, and that was the way it seemed turned out to be. Mm-hmm. Um, when the first when the charging scored after what was it two or three minutes? No, nah, it's a different game. It's not even that. It just gives them a chance to, but even that, that it gives them the chance to sit back and do what our teams do, do for straight Liverpool. But even at that, I thought overall everyone deserved to We don't again create. We created chances, but we weren't clinical. And I, I want to take uh, you back twelve months, right then. Liverpool were breaking every record in the book for the good, all the right reasons. And at the moment, they seem to be breaking all these records for the wrong reasons. I mean, four straight home defeats in the league. Um, it's a 98 year old record since, so, I mean, 1923. You're almost talking a full century. Um, and you look at, I think Kyogre was speaking about it last night, Monday Night Football. You look at the two draws before that, it's, it's no one in six at home. Four losses, two defeats, just two goals scored in them six games. Really is bad stats, you know. There's very little positives you can take from, especially the home games. I know, I know, I think they pulled up the Farnsville last night. These are 17th in the league since January. No started the new year started. So, um, if you look at some of the away performances, there's been there's been positives in there, but at home it's been really really bad. And everybody everybody sort of associates Anfield with being a fortress, and it has been since Klopp's been in there, and with our managers before Klopp as well. But at the yeah. moment, everybody wants to play there now. So, how how do they how do they stop this slump at the moment? And um, do you see any real signs they're going to be able to turn it around? Well, the last time I was on Gary, remember we talked discussed the change of system. Um, and yeah, the last game we actually won in the Premier League was against West Ham, where Liverpool played a diamond. Yep. Um, that was one of the best performances of the season. I like, obviously. Club must have just singled out West Ham for playing that way, and he didn't want to go ahead with playing it, you know, in the future. So he's, he really hasn't went back yet for amazing stunts. Yeah. But I mean, Carragher has been on about it. Neville has been on about it in the last week there, and even the Monday night. I mean, used to, last night even. Um, talking about even trying a way to secure the defense again because he do look leaky. Um, in regards to going back to what we had. It's going to be tough a fight. Uh, I'm not. I don't mean to go on about injuries already, but I mean, I said this the last time too. I know it's defenders are mostly out, but it's having a whole impact on the team. It's just 
change the whole way we play. Like you never, you never see anyone apart from Henderson when he plays centre half doing diagonal balls. He's or you know, vice versa. Maybe um, but Matip and Mane, for example. But um, but it's tough. Tough being a little fan at the moment. I must say, I, I, um, I can, I can, I can understand as well. If you're going for it, I've been been through the ringer with Spurs. Um, the majority of my football career supporting them. And obviously, at the moment, it's when you get to the top and this is happening and it has been a massive, massive drop-off. I think yeah. only got two teams in a worse off position and defending their championship. I think it might have been Leicester the year after they won it. And I think Chelsea win Reno, um as well. And, you know, uh, they end up around the right mid-table that year. So, at the moment, that's what Liverpool's Liverpool's going to end up. But um, one thing Carter said last night was, was he was sick hearing about the injuries and sick hearing about the excuses. And he's took a lot of stick from Liverpool fans. Do, do you think his criticism was slightly over the top in terms of? I know I know what he's saying in terms of you can't keep making excuses every single week, but you were saying about that it's having a whole effect on the team and the club. Do you think his criticism was slightly over the top in that in that, in that respect? No, uh, no, but it, I think he's right to be honest. Because even at the start, I've been I know I have mentioned injuries right in his every month on five minutes, but I mean. He's right on the same, like, at the end of the day, Liverpool Football Club, one of the biggest teams in the world, like, um, they should have went out in January, even the summer before the players got injured. They, obviously, they, they, they sold over him, and they done replace him until January there, when they signed um, Davis and Quebec. Yep. Um, and you're looking at a 19-year-old and a 20-year-old, they try to sort your, your big, big problems out at the back. Um. So, no, I don't think Gallagher was at the top. I think he was kind of spot on. I'm, I'm kind of fed up using the energy excuse now, to be honest too. But as I said, it does, have an, it does have an effect on the team. But at the same time, we should have been well prepared. Like, you know I, mean? I, I think yeah. um, what Gallagher was saying, at the end of the day, Gallagher has to be fair. He can't, I mean, he can't be on yeah. there. Um, mm-hmm. you know, being biased and just staying the same, you know, he has to just call it how he sees it, and that's one thing I like about Carter about Neville. They do nine times out of ten call it how they see it, they're always going to have a wee bit of bias, but that's that's just a football fan of them, you know, uh, anybody. Um, but they do call it, you know, pretty, pretty fairly. And I think what the, he was saying was spot on as well because he was saying that maybe you can lose the Man City, fair enough, maybe you can be well off the pace in the league. But there's no real excuse for being this far and being five points behind West Ham. Um, losing the Brighton, Burnley, you know, not putting West Brom. That's not all down to that's not all down to Van Dyke missing and you know Fabinho no. and all our players. And he was saying the the real problem at the moment at home scoring goals, two goals in six games. You know, there's there's not enough. I think he was saying last night could clock possibly maybe change the system as you talked about bringing in an our attacker, but. You know, he has to take somebody to the midfield then and does he does he trust that defence? And another thing he said was is what you said as well was maybe taking the defence a bit more, maybe, maybe dropping back further ten mm-hmm. yards, you know, because they didn't play that way on their club at the start. Um but do, do you think that club has become a bit stubborn in terms that he's only really got one way? I'm not it's not a massive criticism of him. There's a lot of managers only have maybe they have a certain style and they believe in their ways, but do you think that he's He's, he's refusing to change despite results, despite performances, that he's, he's persistent with similar kind of tactics from game to game? I, to be honest, I think it might just be a bit too proud of what he's done over the last few years, and now it's it's hard for him to see anywhere different than how, how, you're, how you've been playing over the last couple of years too. But um, I, Kjörger mentioned about the, the high line. I was going to go on about that because... He's right. Klopp never played with that much of a high line at the start. Maybe he thought they didn't have the players, like when he said about Skiro and Stacko, Lovren, etc. But I mean, he doesn't have the players. The Van Fijdijs injured, Gomez injured, Matip injured. So he doesn't have them players. He shouldn't be playing. I can't say anything on a football manager, but I'm saying, in my opinion, he shouldn't be playing such a high line when they're bringing on 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, and then you're bringing on Henderson from Montfield. So I think, what, I think what you were saying was basically that he didn't play that way when he had them players, so he hasn't got the players now. So why is he doing it now? Type of thing, and I, I understand mm-hmm. because you've seen against Leicester as well. Like you know, most of the, the goals they were conceding are balls on behind and over the top. And it's one thing that I've associated with Liverpool at times, or even even last year, there was mm-hmm. games where 
could they always give away a couple of chances in a game? They ball over the top or they were caught out. Yeah. Alexander Arnold sometimes being caught up a pitch. Um, and and it just seems to happen a lot more now because Van Dyke's not there and they, they really they really have to sort that out. And that is that is a tactical issue. Well, or the football fans want to matter or not? I know they're big fans of Klopp, but but he can do stuff like that where he does maybe protect the defense a bit more. Um, yeah. And as you say, they're not scoring a lot of goals anyway, so it's not to say that they're. They're opening games up where they can score free and forty bit teams. They're not the goals aren't really flowing. Salah's yeah. been in the fight a lot up front. You know, Manny has chipped in with the odd goal. Firmino's not done enough. Um, in terms of his contribution. So Liverpool are having the if they're gonna win games as well, it's almost gonna be they're gonna have to keep clean sheets and that game is one 0 You know, if they open games up at the moment, like the Leicester, you almost feel they're gonna struggle. So Emma, just just on just on the situation at the moment, right? I just put down here that um they're five points off West Ham now, right? Mm-hmm. How difficult do you think the top four is going to be now from with 13, 14 games to go? How, how difficult is it? It's going to be really difficult. Like It's going to keep on changing too, I think. I mean, there's going to be... I know West Ham and Chelsea's up there at the moment too, but all it takes is a few games for a team that you run up a... Like, I know you're... I've seen you, you know, social media giving them about Spurs, but all it takes is a few few ones for them they come back into the picture too what are they mm-hmm. they're four points behind Liverpool so um, if Liverpool still mentioned being in the thing I think Spurs should still be mentioned on it um, anything oh, I think West Ham are just they're grinding at results yeah. they're they're playing good football um, I, think Chelsea, and I think that's another thing Kiara spoke about last night was even when Liverpool they don't don't know they can't last they play well for the majority of the game yeah, uh, in our games they haven't been able to get a ball in games as well, and, and that's a thing that you almost associate with Liverpool last year, the year before. Last year, yeah. Right. At their best, they still found ways they won, and it's almost like they've lost that one mentality at times. And that is something that's very difficult to get, especially now they're trying to get it back. Do, do you think it's it's coming to an end that that squad just really needs ripped apart? Not 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 massive. I don't mean ripping apart fifteen mm-hmm. or sixteen players. Maybe four or five on the summer, maybe even out and four or five coming on. Maybe younger players that can you seen in the last few weeks that the presence has not been there from the front. You think yeah. they need it and then midfield too, they need an injection of hits and an injection of legs. I will if you look at our first team, Gary, like I mean, um including Van Dyke, Matip, etc. Um, Sawa, Mani, Firmino, they're all hot and furry. Yep. So um when you look at our bench, there's no one really that you can count on every time. Um they play well on the mm. cover. There's no, there's no one pushing them front free either. Do you know what I mean, mm. um, I don't like, like I know Salah's um, scored a lot of goals too, but even on the ball sometimes I don't think he's just been as sharp as I know he's scoring goals. But, he, he, but I mean, I mean, taking a pass player. Do you, you, you think his overall play has not been that great despite the goals? I, I, I well, he's still. It, it's just you know, you always compare to Salah. They like them dribblers that are just find it easy to take it round. I know. He, the left facts have just seem to be doing a job on him and week in and week out. Um, I know he's popping up with goals, but I'm saying at the same time, he's only one scoring goals for us. And then you have Firmino at the weekend there, missing chances, scuffing chances, and it just seemed to be a, a common occurrence. So, uh, it's I mean, the, short, the short-term goal is going to be trying to finish fourth now, but let's just say they don't, right? Say they don't finish in the top four, don't win the Champions League, no, no Champions League football next year. How... how, how where does that leave Liverpool? Because like um, a lot of boys have been on here have been saying they meet Liverpool are quite similar to a lot of teams where the owners aren't going to pump massive money in. That's very much you sell the uh, sell the they buy most. Yeah, and that's yeah. not a, that's un, that's not uncommon. A lot of teams are like that. Man City are a team that do kind of spend a lot of money. The owners pump money in. Yeah. Look at the likes of Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool. Um, look at them sort of teams. They always seem to have to sell they buy, and you might get a small amount, like maybe a make it forty or fifty million on top of that. But, with, but in, in the days money, that's not that's not a lot a lot of money injection. So, you know, how difficult would that be without champ, without the money from Champions League? Um, do you think the owners the owners would 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 pump big money in, or do you think it's going to be a very difficult summer to try and get things done? Uh, I can't see them coming in with like you know with, with big um investment without selling players. I mean. The only mm. reason we sold we we bought um Allison and Van Dyke for example was because of the Coutinho money. Yeah. Um. So uh, you're right in saying we're we're not a 
I we're we're we're, we're all, um we can only buy players when we're when we're selling them because the uh, FSE do they want to put on their own money in this league? <laughs> so it's um it's gonna be tough hundred percent Gary if they if Liverpool don't make top four and I can't I, I can see them going far in the I think maybe semi finals but because it's just a I know they're I'm complaining about how to play in at the moment but teams that want to play football against this like I mean. Almost everyone wants to play football, but you know, I kind of, I kind of flat out like, 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 darn it. Like, so I mean, I'm obviously, you know, we were chatting before, I've got Leeds and Southampton on here in the background, and the referee's actually gone over the monitor to check for a penalty for Southampton, right? But I've looked at it, and it's it's definitely not a penalty. I don't know, I'm not sure, I I, I don't know why he's gone over, unless he's given the penalty already, because to me, it looks like he's kicked the Leeds player and just fallen over. Um, He's, look, he's looking at it. He's been looking at it now for at least a minute. I, I don't know what's... Did he give the it? He's pulling a gun from across. I'm not sure if... Right, he's, what's he doing now? Oh, yes. Oh, he obviously gave the penalty, as it was. And he's, he, yeah, he's changed his mind now. It's a clear day. He's ah. actually going to break it by two. I was actually good. Actually, I, didn't, I must have read the They were just showing you the, the replay. Um, but no, I think you're what you're right with saying. It, was, it is going to be difficult in the summer. And I think now this is a big, big sort of sort of summer for Liverpool in general. If they're not in the Champions League, and at the moment you would say it's 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 very 50 50. I don't think they're favourites. Um you wouldn't back against them. Not that you wouldn't back against them come back on date, but the way they've been all season, they haven't been able to get on a consistent run of games and they're gonna to have to produce a consistent run. They they're playing catch up now as well. So you know it's gonna be very difficult. Um if they can if they can get Manny scoring. And they can maybe tighten up at the back. They, they will have a chance because I don't think the our teams are that great. Um, West Ham playing Man City this weekend. You know what? Away, you think Man City will win that, and that'll give them a chance. Then Liverpool going away to Sheffield. It's a big weekend for them. They have they won that game? Um, but they playing it is. Exactly. So they've got they've got they've got a um, advantage this weekend in terms of fixtures. But mm-hmm. if if there's not going to be a cash injection right from the owners, do you think Klopp might consider that? And maybe it is time for some you know, they walk away that if, if if there's not going to be a big cash injection, players are getting to that age. If they're not in the Champions League, he might sense that it's just not it's just it's no point staying on for an hour a year and it, maybe it's time they walk away. No, at the back of my head, sometimes I think you would like I would be saying, geez, I wonder if he wants just a break from football again or if he wants a you know a new challenge. He's like he's won the Champions League, he's won the Premier League. Uh, and I think as well, just before you go on it, I think an orphan as well. His, his demeanor looks about down because of what happens, what's happened in his personal life. He doesn't look himself yeah. at all. But in regards to him leaving like, during the summer, I, I, I don't think he will. I think he will see us now as a challenge to say, like, I've got Liverpool back up to where they belong. And mm-hmm. now my challenge is to get them back up again because of how much of a decline they came down. So, like, see it. I'm not. It'd be a bit controversial, but if Liverpool had their full squad again, uh, he, I think Klopp kind of knows this in the back of his head. He even said that, I think it was the, uh, an interview last week. Mm. He was saying, um, Pep knows that if we had the full squad, we would be up every city. Now, I I, back, I don't back man today. I said Man City won the league mm. uh, from the start of the season before we had all the injuries and all that crack. But um, I think we would be close to Man City, but I still think Man City would won, won the league. So, I think Klopp kind of knows that too. Well, thanks that anyway. But what, what I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see him leaving anyway. Yeah, I can't. I, th- I think the biggest problem Liverpool have, right, is you don't know if Van Dijk's going to come back. He's uh, yeah. his, his usual self, you know what I mean? So I was saying that I think if Van Dijk... The biggest problem I have is the Van Dijk's injury problem, right? That he might not come back at the same player, but let's just say, right. Right? let's just say he does, right? And they do mm-hmm. make that sort of defensive structure back. What about the front three? What are they going to do? Because I think for me, it was an obvious problem. I don't think he's been doing it. Even last year, I don't think he scored enough goals. I think it went under the radar because of how Liverpool were, were as a team. Do you think there's a, there's a they need to change that number nine role or maybe adapt their style a bit? Everyone keeps on saying oh, about a new player, but I think he might just. Like I feel, it, I just you know we were talking about earlier on about investments, yeah. and I don't think he will get an investment, especially if we don't finish top four. Um, we're probably going to have to rely on Jota, and mm. for me, no, just she even had a couple of games against. Well, he won the he scored a winner against Spurs. I thought he played well against West Ham. He does 
wee things every now and then, and even against United in the FA Cup, I was all, he seems to be pressing a lot more, and, mm. and then it just went back down the kind of sulking about the pitch. It's, kind of, but it's, it's just a bit like the, the, the league at the moment. Everybody just seems to be very inconsistent from game to game. It's not even like Roman's. Uh, like, it's not even three or four games and then three or four games here. It's just from game to game. Right? It's, but there is a big problem. I spoke about it with Josh here and I spoke about it with Cam. I think the players are suffering from the schedule quite a lot. You know, mm. our man City, everyone else seems to be really struggling. They, they produce even two or three ones in a row. You know, that's not normal. You know, Obviously, teams don't go in runs of six and seven with games, but you do see teams one, two or three in a row. I, I, can't, I can't think of too many times this year where teams were done money runs. Yes. It just seems to be very different from game to game. And uh, I don't really want to the game, but I do think that you could have summer problems next year because of the Euros and there's not going to be proper rest and stuff. So thank you. I might take, I might take an hour year before we get back to normal, but um, hey, moving on, right? Um, Spurs obviously played West Ham on Sunday and I was pretty confident on the game, not necessarily because they are form, but I just thought that West Ham, the pressure's on them. Like, you know, it's different when you're when you're doing well, but now they've got to the crunch time of the season that they, it will be a very difficult game for them going into it. Um, because they were going as favourites as well, and it's usually Spurs favourites for that game. I and mean, there is a bit of a bit of rival there, more on the West Ham side. But first half Spurs were decent. They give away a really sloppy goal again, defensively poor. But most of the half they, they controlled, had a couple of chances. Was half and done, he really grew into it. Second half, again, give away a really poor goal. But Bale, come on. I have to say, he really changed the game. It would surprise me because I don't think he could ever produce a kind of performance like that where some of his touches, his movement, his passes, his, you know, and that goal, he nearly scored an unbelievable no, uh, back of the years, you know, and he's so unlucky. But everything that Spurs did in that second half went through him and Kane as well. And was signs there that if, if he can get them two playing, it's, you know, nine times out of ten, Spurs won that game three or four two. The chances they had in that second half, you know, West Ham really only had two chances in the game, and it was one of them ones about like the Brighton and Palace game last night, where Brighton had a lot of the, you know the game and, and didn't really um pick it, you know, Palace two chances, two goals, but it can happen. But it was one of the ones where I didn't really blame the manager too much, and Spurs were quite unlucky. Where before they've been very very poor in games, um, but the overall, oh. the, but the bigger picture is. It's not been good enough for a long time, and I think it's five defeats out of six in the league for Mourinho, and it's a really bad run around summer to Liverpool since since the turn of the year, since they lost that game at Anfield. It's been bad. Um, they were now 12 points in the last 12 league games. Parts, you know, they put that in the context, Parts, you know, was sacked with 14 points after his first 12 games last season, so he's actually on a worse run than him. And top four, you now he does look, as you say, it's not completely out of the question, because I did look at the table again, after that post they were put up and they are nine points behind West Ham. They do have a game in hand and with the fixtures they have coming up, if they were to get on a, a run at the back of, you know, they could get back on date. But um there's been there's been a lot of talk over the last sort of month about Will Mourinho move on and stuff and it's it's more like been from the club that he's gonna be here to stay. But this week that's stance has changed quite a lot and it's not more it's not it's not so much rumors, it's strong you know, rumours that the Telegraph are pretty reliable, the, the Athletic are pretty reliable. And the word is that Nagelsmann's the top target. He's quite keen to come. He thinks that Leipzig, his time at Leipzig is over. I think that it won't happen until the summer, obviously. But he is Spurs' top target. I think Rogers is the other one. But they believe that Rogers is going to be very hard to get, not just for Spurs, for anybody. They think he's very happy at Leicester. Yeah. He believes that Leicester now he's got a perfect... He almost considers Leicester now a top team, that they can go on now and maybe challenge for leagues. As I said, in terms of owners, they do pump money in. So, and the recruitment and the setup's very good. Brand new training ground. You know, Leicester are going to be considered one of the big. I think it's no longer going to be a top six. It's going to be a top seven. Understand. So it's going to be very difficult for any team to get. Um, and they believe Nagelsmann's going to be a lot easier, and he's keen to come and he's coming with a big reputation as well. So I don't know whether that's a big a big thing for Spurs, but or if there's a bit of a risk there as well. We're going to talk about Nagelsmann in a minute, but just on renew. Do you think the writing's on the wall now with these rumours that the Spurs' mind's made up really unless they go and won the Europa League that Spurs will probably make the change in the summer? I looked that way, Gary. Like, was it a, a year or two ago Marino mentioned about you know, what happened in modern football and changing how he's going to play, but you haven't really seen that. I mean, as you West Ham in the second half, they, they, were, they were saying they were um, playing more positive. 
again, it just seems to be a mistake after mistake, costing these. And I mean, he's got a great reputation about how he def- how he set his teams up to defend. But I mean, they don't look great. Um, so I can't see. I can't see. I can't see Spurs finishing. Maybe one on another. Well, they will be your best bet, but I can't see finishing top four. Um, and I can't see the fans having as much patience with Moreno playing the way he's playing. Um, so, and that was my, oh, we're, we're going to that after. But I'm saying regarding Moreno, I, I think as as long as he's one, unless he's one of the right league, as you say, I think his time's up. I think Spurs and Arsenal, right? We're going to talk about Arsenal, but I've been the two biggest disappointments of the season, right? Because it's not been a great standard of the league. You know, finishing mid table, and this is, is bad, bad, bad. And any RC, you've been well in the bottom half of the table. You know, top four this season, you're not going to have to get a lot of points to get in there. Mm-hmm. There was an opportunity. Um, and the way two teams finished last season, I think Spurs were second and the foreign table behind United, and Arsenal obviously won the FA Cup. So there were signs there that they could go kick on this season. It's yeah. not really happened, and I think the, the fact that no fans have been in the stadium has really helped Mourinho and Arteta because the performances and results haven't been good enough. But just on Mourinho, as you say there, he prides his teams on being organised, being defensive, and you know, defensively organised, not keeping, being very hard to beat. I do you sympathise with him. I think a lot of these players aren't good enough defensively, right? I, I don't think they're dropped yet. They made, they made, they're making the same mistakes now they, they made on their parts of Tino and stuff. So, yeah. likes of Sanchez, I said Sanchez is. He's a car crash. You have to defend her. He's awful. You know, he's really, really bad. Dyer, I just, I, he, he just makes too many mistakes as well. He's not really kicked on. All the Varels keep past it. Um, he's past his best anyway, for sure. But Mourinho says it's. I think he said that some of these things are beyond his control. And individual mistakes, right? It can happen. And sometimes you do have sympathise with a manager. But he's all the Varels. He signed him up on a contract. Dyer's his main man. He's kept Sanchez. He signed Rodham from Swansea. He signed Doherty from Wolves. He signed Regulin from um, Real Madrid. So he, he, he spent money on the defence. So he uh-huh. can't make the excuses that you know, he's not had the chance to fix it. Um, and as you say, you know, they were a lot more positive in the second half. It's probably the best I've seen Spurs play in a long time. Um, I thought they were very unlucky to lose the game, to be fair. But again, it was reactive. It was They were before they would go down. And you know, why not start games like that? They're, 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 they're doing it when they're all down. Like, do you know what I mean? So... He's definitely not helping himself, and, and the fans are. You know, we're obviously big fans of Twitter and stuff, and we be on quite a lot. But the fans are like, there's not, there's very few Mourinho fans there now left as Spurs, and you know, the fact of his previous jobs at Chelsea and either how it turned out, these Spurs fans have totally lost fifth, and and you know, I really wanted them to work, but it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. I think it's going to take a massive up 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 turn in results in his next. He's got favourable fixtures coming up. He's going to have to string results together, but. I think the Spurs board have made their mind up and they're just trying to get to the end of the season um, and, and then get Nagelsmann on. Uh, uh, I don't think the League Cup will save his, you know, if he, even if he's won the League Cup. I, uh, I don't think it will. Thing be, thing for you, but I don't it'll, it'll be great to end the trophy drought. Mm, um, I know, that's what I mean. I was going to say there, but like, it's going to be good for you to get a trophy. If you, I'm not, it's a big ass. I'm saying he's a bit mad today. But I don't nice. think he's will be able to do that either because I just, Man City has seen them stop all the season. But, um, I know. I, see, to be honest, I think Mourinho, I'm saying it, I think it was just one of them that last week. I think his next shot might be just um, Portuguese national team. Yeah, um, he's going to be back in the Premier League. No chance after this. Um, and I've seen that a lot of players apparently are really just become disinterested in these methods. And stuff. Oh, a lot too. I, I think what you're going to see now over the next few weeks is see because of the league position. Spurs mm-hmm. are in a position now where mid table, they've not hundred. Not that they're going to play for, but they have to one game. So I think you might see a, a lot of attacking. And Mourinho's not really got anything to protect anymore. And you might see in the cup games where he becomes the fitting. No, that'll be the turning point. Um, if they get the ladder, they, they should be three in this Europa League or four one up when they get this home tie mm-hmm. against um this very poor Wolfsburger team. So they should be three in that. That'd be interesting to see how far they go on it. And if they were to get to the end of it, how you would approach the game and stuff. But there's no doubt in my mind the best way for Spurs they they play with the players they have. As they go on the front foot, um, and I was going to say, man, in the belly, uh, uh, Gary, I, I, I would see if it was the one pick one um, Spurs player. I just in the belly just seems to. I know he's been on and off freeze, but I mean, I just see the way he plays. He just drains, drives forward under the uh, on the attack position. Mm-hmm. That's what I want from someone to Liverpool to do, yeah. and there's no one really doing it at the moment. Um, and then obviously you have Kane, Bale, Song. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I, I've criticised a lot of... I think, I think the squad overall, defensively, is not good enough and stuff, but there's the attack and talent they have. You know, you look at Bale, Kane, Son. There's no doubt a player would get... And Don Bell, there's no doubt a player, a manager would get a lot more than players. Um, and then you see me, Bale, there's still, a, there's still a player in him. You know, it's all about getting them motivated, getting them out there. I mean, you can't go from... You can't turn on a game like that. You know, the way he, and West Ham are a good side. Like, you know, they've been a good side this season. Like, you know, he, he was really, really good in that second half. And if, if they can get him playing again now, it might help. But favourable fixtures coming up. I think it's Fulham. I think it's, sorry, it's Burnley at home this weekend. Fulham away. And Palace at home. If he, get, uh, he needs to get, apparently he's got them three games right now. And if there's not positive results, I think Spurs are going to be possibly getting it in now. And just giving it the, somebody until the end of the season. Maybe uh, Lely King, just to steady the ship. Until they get the rest of the summer, because hey, people might laugh and go, "Why would you do that?" But at the end of the day, if you're not getting results under him, there's no point keeping him on if you're not going to see see a future beyond it. So, um, as you said about front foot football, one manager that's been re- revitalized around Europe for has Nagelsmann. A lot of talk about him. He's only 33. Great spell at Hoffenheim, and then a brilliant spell at Leipzig at the minute. But there's a lot of talk, even the summer past there, that he was only going to do one more year at Leipzig and. He really wants to come to England. And he'll look at Spurs as, as a great opportunity to, to, to further enhance his reputation. Let me say, let me just say a look at them players. Can he convince Alexa Kane and Son to stay on? Again, he has a manager with a reputation, you know, he, and I think there is a gamble behind it because he's not been in the English game. But he, it is a, it is an appointment that excites you. You look at him, he's he's got a very similar profile to Pochettino where he done well in Spain and then he done well at Southampton. He sort of I think he kept Hoffenheim up when he came in that season. I think he won seven or last fourteen games, and then he took them into the Champions League the year after. And then he went to Leipzig oh, and, and took them on, and he's really made them a force in Europe. So, and an often I look at where coaches they improve young players, and he's done that at Leipzig as well. So, do you think that would be a really, really, um, really top appointment for Spurs and a real coup, or do you think there's a lot of, a lot of still, a lot of questions about him still? Uh she, she even like just from what. The teams, you can just see that they play attacking, exciting football, and I think it's what Spurs, <laughs> kind of what Spurs kind of need. I remember the first I seen him, Gary, was uh, Liverpool was just saying there, Gary, um, about um, Liverpool played Hoppenheim in a qualifier not long ago, not a few seasons ago. Um, even when Liverpool went like, I think it was two up or something, they just kept attacking, attacking. It was just exciting to watch. I think they ended up scoring a goal around near the end. Um, and then obviously, what he's done at Leipzig, to his turn, like, obviously, they have money behind them, but I mean. Oh, I'm not saying he's going to get a lot of money as Spurs, but if he goes to Spurs, he will be Daniel Levy will say, look, I well, I think Spurs already have the attacking players. They play the way he wants. It's kind of back up what he needs at the back. But I'm saying that, watching Liverpool against Leipzig too, it does seem, it just seems to be a German manager kind of thing, where they just, like they... <laughs> Their defense, the uh, players they tackle so much that they forget about defending so much sometimes too. Because a man that Liverpool match against them, they look really bad at the back. To be honest, like mm, I think um, if you if you look at the obviously the man in the game, I lost five 0 and the, the Liverpool game they aren't. You look at them and there, there is going to be signs about him as well. He's going to have to improve, and I think it's going to be one of them ones if he does come on. Although it's an exciting sort of prospect of him coming on and you know picking his sort of. Europe's top young coach at the moment, but he's got a lot to learn, and you're going to have to you're going to have to accept he's going to make mistakes, and you're going to have to maybe ride the ride the well. Time. Time. Well, you know, I need to give him time. I'm not one for one of them. You know, I don't think you should manager should get three or four years. You know, you shouldn't be accepting maybe mid table, and then you know you have to go on and at least you know past you know second season of Spurs, they finished they finished in I think the top four. You know, so mm. you're right for I I think transition years. You can have one transition year, and then you need to start showing signs that. You can you can do stuff. You know you can't be just having transition here and trying you know because then you go further and further behind the next manager. So although I, I would be prepared to give him time, um, it, it, it can't be a long process of two or three. No, no, I just mean like when like don't give that time in football anyway. So mm-hmm. I think if he, if he can get a transition here, maybe move a few of these players out and bring a few of these players on, and then kick on in the second season. Mm-hmm. I, I think Spurs could could do a lot. You know they could benefit out of it. Um, uh, it's what you need. Make you You need a manager, and he'll get the. You think he would get the best out of them players? Well, he can convince Kane and Son, and the like same players to stay. That's an R thing. But if they were, if it came up that they move on, I, I would R see someone like Nagelsmann. He is a good young coach. 
more great players than someone like Emery Neal? Uh, if you were to sell, sell Kane, you would get, you know, still get big money for him. And he would yeah. use, you can depend on Nagelsmann to use the, the funds well. Um, it's not even that. There's, there's obviously the players in um, Spurs' youth team that he'll develop, develop like Felix. So, 100%, I think that's exactly what Spurs need is a kind of manager that wants to play attack on football. I think um, we were, when I was just saying there about the about processes and stuff, and one one club I look at that at the moment, they're in a similar kind of position with a young manager, and there are a lot of their fans have been saying, well, not all of them, but some of them, more of the local fans I've been chatting to here, because I know there's a few different views on social media, but they've been saying about Arteta and trust this process, and you know, again, I, I like to see managers get a bit of time and you know develop, but you look at one club in Spurs, right, who. Or actually above Arsenal on the table, not by much. It's only two points. They just have played a game less, and fans are furious. You know, Spurs are in a cup final. Um, they're you, you nearly have to say they're free in the next round of Europa League, and um, the fans are furious. You know the results, that the, the performances, and you know the underachieving. Where and then you see Arsenal, where they're like sort of different. They, 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 they be like, oh, he needs time. And you know, I actually seen some Arsenal fans and social media were saying, you know, what are our fans? You know, you know, what have they come to that they're accepting this? You know, that I think Arsenal have lost 11 games in the league. They've only won 10. You know, so if I, if I was seeing signs like that with Nagelsmann in our second season, if say he does come in, I would be questioning him. So do you, do you think that Arteta gets a by ball at Arsenal quite a lot? And do you see that the process is, is that this process that they're talking about is, is really coming to the fruition or, you know, on how much more time should they give it? Right. Arsenal's always play good attack on football. Um Finger, Emery played good, good at going forward, but I mean defense still hasn't improved. I mean I don't I don't see what way Arsenal did they have like a way of playing football. You don't really see it. Mm. Um it's not just that I think it's that their investment is not really paid off. Um what is the team all am a week per week, three hundred grand? What he's done, he's, he's got like two do shots. You think and they're, um, do you think are, they're improving under Arteta, or do you think they're just in a similar position where they were 18 months ago? Um, not really, to be honest, Gary, because mm. Arsenal were, were one of the FA Cups under Wenger, and they weren't happy with that, and now they're doing the same with Arteta, and they seem to be settled on just because he's a young second coach, but I. I don't, I don't buy it, Gary, to be honest. Yeah, I, that. I think a lot of it, right? As Arsenal as Arsenal fans, some Arsenal fans, now some Arsenal fans have turned against them. They think the results haven't been good enough. And unless they won the Europa League, they would change it in the summer, right? But a lot of local fans I've been talking, they've been saying they should give them an hour season, right? And I look at it and go, well, they finished eighth last year and they had half a season, right? I know they won the FA Cup, but as you say, they won an FA Cup under Van Granoy. Um, you know, and they wanted him out, and he was actually finishing fourth. So it's it's quite um it's quite it's quite mad how they how they come to that. But um he he's had a, people say he's he's had, he's, had a, he's had a lot of windows. He's brought on some players, and I don't think a lot of you say a lot of them players have paid off. He's had to rely on young players to pull him out this season. Um, and then I and then I think about the you know, the performances, the results they do lack it. I think as you can say under Wenger, they always had it at an attack on football side of play. Um, you see them goals of the season where they would maybe put six or seven great moves together, you know, and score. Yeah. They do that under Arteta quite a lot. I've seen one goal this year where that happened. A lot of their games are, the way they approach that game on Sunday against Man City, they just, stuff they said, all oh, no defeats a good result. And that's just uh-huh. not personal. And a lot, I think a lot of fans really turned on them on social media after, after Sunday because they were thinking, well, that comes from a manager then tactics and if he doesn't if that's the mentality of the club then that's not good enough and it's just it's just that I think they're they're mesmerized by the whole Pep connection that they think because he worked with Pep it's gonna be the same kind of oh we're we're getting you know the best thing that we can get. You know we can't get Pep but we can get someone like Pep. I think if he, if he was at Burnley and he was Sean Dice's assistant they wouldn't this <laughs> they wouldn't want him. So it does it is one of them ones where I think you've seen it we Middlesbrough, I know they're not the same as Arsenal, but when they got Karanka, he was, I think he worked with Mourinho at Madrid, and Middlesbrough fans were loving that. Um, who was the boy at Swansea? Was it Clement? He worked at Madrid with Zidane, was it? You know, mm. so not always not good number twos, not good number ones. Um, and I do think there is potential in Arteta. 
but I do think it's a, it, it was a job that he should never have got. Um, Thurston was a big, big job, and I thought he needed an experience longer. Um, you look at Ancelotti, look at Everton, I think if he, he was at Arsenal, they'd be doing a lot better than they are now. Um, See, when I remember they, they joined it, it was like the exact same team. Um, I think, you, know, you can't tell me Everton have better players than Arsenal. Um, mm. He's getting a real tuner, that Everton team. Um, and I think Chargers spoke about it after the game on Monday Night Football about he felt that Ancelotti was the biggest difference in Everton for the Anfield in, in previous years. Not so much the players, it was the Ancelotti won the game with his tactics. So, uh, how do you think Arteta will be there next year? Say they, they crash at Europa League now and they have a big game now on Thursday. If they don't win that game, their season's as good as over. Do you think that the board will, will give him an R season? Um, and do you think if he does get an R season, he's been very fortunate? He does get an R. He will be fortunate now because I mean, Leeds won up Leeds won that match and I carried it. Leeds go um, above Arsenal again. Yep. Um, Arsenal will be back in the bottom half of the table. I mean, hey, many games today, 14, 13. And you're looking, you're looking at 12, 11 this season. I know that I know there's a big, not much of a difference between yeah. seventh day, 12, for example. But as you say, there's just no state of play. I don't see much of an improvement compared to what Emery had. Um, one thing that might save him, which is mad because they're so young, is the, the young players coming for you. I think Saka is going to be right up there as one of the best players in the Premier League soon. Um, after a few years, but I mean, if Arsenal don't get back on that Champions League, I mean, he he'll want to progress his career. And you know what happens in Arsenal players play well. It's just a difficult one because the goal is <laughs> back on those top four, right? And they just seem to be getting further and further away from it. And you know. People might go, oh, you're Spurs fan. I, I, I try to be as objective as I can, right? Mm-hmm. No, it really doesn't but it does really doesn't matter. I look at I look at our teams, you know. You look at you look at say West Ham, David Moyes come in after Arteta and after Mourinho and look how he's turned around West Ham. So that's my point in terms of managers should need two or three years to get to get a club turned around. I don't mind giving one season, but you should be starting to see improvements in the second season. And I think at Spurs, that's why the fans are so unhappy with Mourinho. He's had transfer windows, he's had money spent. Arsenal's the same. You know, they're not really improving at all. If anything, they're going backwards. Whereas Moyes is West Hammer and Dire Straits. They were even you know, they haven't got the players for his Arsenal team, but yet they're up there in the top four. So and Villa last year were almost relegated and they're up there fighting on and in that top area. So so that that, that that was the way I look at it. And I think Arsenal fans are, are really, really, you know, they're what they're wanting our territory work. I can see why. But I think they've been blindsided by it a lot, and I think the reality of it is that it hasn't really improved them. And um, there's a big decision to make in the summer, Wayne, because I don't think if, if if they have an hour, if they end up giving them an hour season, mm. and they get the same kind of results a couple of months on the season, then the fans are going to be really on his back end with the fan because they're back in the stadium. And I think one of the and last yeah, fans yeah. said about that, yeah. like Arteta, Arte, um, Arteta's lucky there was no fans in the stadium on Sunday because that kind of performance wouldn't be accepted. Um, but hey, moving on to the, the Champions League this week, um, by game and I'm really looking forward to this because I think it's going to be a fascinating tactical battle. Um, Athletic Madrid and Chelsea. I mean, Tuchel's obviously turned Chelsea around quite, um, since Lampard's come on their own beaten. Um, yeah. But I think you're seeing why things can turn quite quickly with Tuchel. He's already singled out Callum hudson Doy. A lot of criticism, I think, from what I've seen with Kyogre's piece last night, it was you know very, very harsh. You know, he subbed them on at half time and he subbed them off on the 75th minute. I thought he was injured and at the start. I think and then, worse fronts uh, than most of the are players and stuff. So it was a very strange one. Um, and I think that was the thing at PSG and Dortmund where it all fell apart because he, he did criticise a lot of the players. And I think he is quite similar to Mourinho type where he, he, he does speak his mind to the media and that can be a negative in terms of the modern day player. So Simeone, we know what he's going to be like at a play. How, how, how much of a tactical battle do you see this going tonight? And, who do you favour? Do you think I'll go for you over the tie? Um, it's hard to judge of that. I was looking at their most recent results, Gary, and they haven't considered that they haven't kept a clean sheet in the last seven matches. You know, yeah. Um, they were they were a bit there on it by Levante too. Um, and they played, they actually played the same team last week. It must have been like a you know a, a delayed uh, match because of the you know COVID. But so they played them twice and they drew one each, and they beat them two now at home. Mm. So. Even though they're top of the league, I just think Apple League is on its way out. Gary, in terms yeah. of big European football, I actually put up a tweet there like last last week about that. That um, the La Liga teams are just playing that slow kind of build up play, and it's just not working out for any of them. And then when it comes to Atletico, now they 
normally are solid, but I'm saying at the last, they haven't kept a clean sheet in the last seven matches, so you don't know what way it's going to go. Um, it is going to be a, a good match, I reckon, though. But I think Chelsea might put them out, to be honest. You think Chelsea will go free over the two, two legs? Uh, I just think that Chelsea have better players overall, Gary. Um, I know Simeone might have his uh, defensive organisation and his set up. You know what? I think, I think um, you're right. And we were saying about this. I seen your tweet last week. On, uh, I think it was after, was after the Barcelona game, the PSG game. Aye. Uh, uh, um, I think the standards dropped dramatically. You've only seen the way Sociedad played against I me. Mean, United completely ripped them apart, you know, and it was very easy, you know, away from home. Um, Barcelona were ripped apart by PSG. Um, and the struggled, they struggled either of their group. So I do think the standard in Spain dropped dramatically. Um, it would be interesting to see how they fare against Chelsea tonight, but there's something about them in Europe, though. I think they, even when they've had poorer seasons in the league, they, they always are a tough multi cracking. Um, you've seen last year against yourselves, you know, they dig on and they'll make it difficult for Chelsea. You see Chelsea having a lot of the ball because Tuchel teams do have a lot of the ball. But it'll be interesting to see how that pans out at Chelsea because that was the first real taste of him singling out a player and he's only been there a month. So it'll be interesting to see how Gallum Hudson and responds and how Chelsea responds. But I do think Chelsea will get free as well over the tie. Um, but it will be a really good watch tonight. Um, last year against Bayern Munich, also I how do you see that going over two games? Bayern Munich obviously lost the weekend too, so maybe they're not as strong as they were last year. How do you see that? Again, we were talking about the high line for Liverpool. Okay, um, I think Bayern Munich considered like 35 goals this season in the league. And it's just oh, the exact same. Leeds just scored one now. Oh, that's Arsenal back the bottom half. <laughs> anyway, um, I, so I was saying there about Bayern's offence. It just, they just seem the it's because of the way they play to invite teams to come on to them too. Um, so it's, I don't know. I, I think Bayern will overcome them. It's just, mm. I mean, they're attacking players. Your man Alfonso Davies, I think he's taking over the Robinson now. He's the left, best left back in the world. Like, oh, the last. It's mad. Like, it's just, I don't see how, you, how your left back can be that good going forward, but he just seems to take a hand. Um, Sani, I watched Sani. Bayern actually got bit there at the weekend. I know you were saying that too. And one, one, I actually watched some of the match and Sani played well. Um, he was playing on the right wing for a while too, and he actually cut back and he, he set up Lewandowski for on a goal. So I think Bayern have team on strength for them. But um, Bayern, they do. It's they're they're easy to beat. Well, not easy, but um, they're there to be attacked on too. Um, I, you see, fancy Bayern. I think Bayern will get free as well. But just on the teams, I I sort of been watching a bit a bit more of the European football after what you know Josh was on. I only try and get a feel for the Champions League teams. But from what I've seen, I think Man City are favourites for the Champions League just on what the, the standard. I think Bayern Munich are obviously going to be, you know, the reigning champions, but you know they, they don't look. I watched the battle in there at the weekend. They don't look the same sort of outfit as they were last year. Um, you know, so I do think Man City are going to be. The, I know, I know they've had a bit of um, an issue in the Champions League before, but I think they're the best team on it this year, um, and they'll be the team that are going to try and beat. But um, they're playing the morning against Borussia and and Gladbach. Do you think they'll be comfortable in that tie? Aye. Uh, um, I watched about a. Gladbach are on the group stages um, on the Bundesliga and they they um, they played Shakhtar one of the matches they um, that I watched I think they, they bit them was it six five or six now and they were really great that way. but like at the same time you're playing against a Shakhtar team from Ukraine it's Man City they have um double level like so I expect Man City to go through um on that one also she um and the whole thing about Gladbach the, their managers. Going to be the next Dortmund manager, you know. Um, a bit weird they announce it. I know it's, it has to be, probably has to be announced, but it's a bit weird that they're going on the Champions League. I think that's just the way Dortmund do things. It's saying they, they uh, tend to do that, and they do that in Germany too. We've seen, we've seen Leipzig before that game against Liverpool. Obama Cano was leaving. They tend to do uh, that. I don't know why that is that they announce stuff before even when you know. So I don't know why, why that is, but it's obviously a trend in Germany. But the last game is Real Madrid against Atlanta. Atlanta, obviously you played Atlanta in the group stage and you got you got one, you got a very good Atlanta in one game and a very bad Atlanta in our game. But Madrid, Madrid are going to be there for Tekken too. It's a very interesting time. I don't think this is any means it's there. If Atlanta turn up and play well, you know, they got to the quarterfinals last year in the Champions League and they're very lucky to go out to PSG. Um, do you think this could be the possible shock in the in the in the, in the Champions League this year? Uh, definitely, definitely. For, um, I, I would say, I'm not going to say Obviously, people are not going to say Madrid aren't favourites, but I, 
see the way Atalanta play against see them again as an our Spanish team slow build up but Madrid's kind of going back to the way Barca play now so kind of slow build up and Atalanta scored I think it was nearly 100 goals last season in the Serie A I think for like 30 more goals than Juventus they just attack you and that's it'll be a very interesting tie because Atlanta will play one win they'll go for, the, they'll go for Madrid like, and, if, and if they turn on the, a free scoring game they could they could they could um they could, they could they could definitely get through in this tie but on the first day and the second legs of the Europa League games um Arsenal against Benfica 1-1 from the first leg this is also a neutral ground how do you see this going it's a it's Areol, yeah. Areol, the sort of British or the English teams. Um, this will be the one that everyone's looking at in terms of you know, you fancy Leicester at home, they turned they, they won their game. Spurs and United are as good as three. So Arsenal, Benfica, Benfica were very poor in that game. Arsenal really should be out of sports, should have been qualified. But now, yep. I think this is a really, really big game for our Ted on Arsenal. It is a big game, but um from my first week, I I I don't think it's not the same team anymore. Um they're they're down to fourth now in the Portuguese league as well. Yeah. Um I think Sport and Osborne seem to be running away with it. Um so I I don't think Benfica um have enough going forward anymore to pose any threat to Arsenal. Um and if they did have even a, a good few attacking players, then I think Arsenal's offense is easy to get at, but I think Arsenal will beat them. I think, I think Arsenal them. will go through as well. I um there's also a six o'clock game, Rangers against Royal Antwerp. Um, it's a real cracker. The first game, I think Rangers won four three away from home. I watched a lot of time. It's very, very strong strong at home in Europe as well this year. Um, do you think they'll uh, get the job done here and on, on the next round? Aye. Uh, um, I watched actually. I watched the last ten minutes of the game. I was at end to end. Um, McGregor put off a few good saves, and then Ryan Kent went and scored, and then they got the penalty. I think Rangers will beat them. Um, at home, it seemed to be. I know it's a Scottish league they mostly play on, but I mean, I just, I think Rangers will be too much for them. Hey, Rangers are having one of end seasons where you just feel whoever they play against in this competition, they're going to give them a game because they're playing with such a fluency, such a lot of confidence that they're, you know, they're, the way they're playing their own league. Um, it's mm. obviously transfer and this. I think they genuinely believe they can beat anybody. Um, and uh, there'd be, I see if Spurs were to draw the next round, I'd be petrified because. They, they can win different ways. They can play at, they can win games 1 0, or they can win games 4 3. Um, JR is really, really um, building his reputation out there. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the summer um, because, you know, Celtic would obviously need to come back, come back next year. Um, but would he would he think it's time to move on? Um, would he move to England? Um, there's, well, he's been linked with Newcastle job before. I think um, Newcastle are going to be looking at that position of Bruce. Um, maybe maybe not now. Come in the summer, so you could possibly see a movement in the Eng- English English league. Um, and I think he'd be a he'd be a great addition to the Premier League. And obviously, being a Liverpool legend, you probably wish him to do well as well, Emmett. Oh. I um, he's only enhanced his reputation this season, anyway, guys. So it's going to be um exciting to see what happens. I think when um, well, I think you know we were talking about Klopp earlier on of saying he might leave in the summer. I think we'll see his Liverpool contract out. And his contract actually ends the same month or same year as Gerard does with Rangers. So mm. it will be exciting. I think that's just going to be... The only a... thing about it, Emmett, right? That's a massive jump from Rangers to Liverpool. He's seen, he's seen with, with Rogers. He had a company Leicester before he, you know, he's been like uh, jobs. I think Liverpool will want to see him move to our Premier League club first. I think it will happen eventually. Experience. I, sure I don't see in the next year or two, but that is one to keep an eye on. But um, United against Real Sociedad, God, I fancy him. They, they, it's not a four and all up. It's, it's, a, it's a training game, really, isn't it? Uh, it's game over. I guess, again, we're supposed to that as a Spanish slow build up. And United, United um, are one of the best counter attacking teams in Europe at the moment, because like, there's no doubt about it. So I can just and see Spurs, an R. Spurs, they are one, four, one up. You can see them comfortably as well. Home here, I. I mean, we should be able to rest a few players there. That was for a team at Austrian Leagues. Even um, uh, South, they, South they were, they were like a like a group stage game or a or a, not, or a qualifier. They were that bad. I don't know how they got out of their group, but uh, our one that's tight is Leicester against Slavia Pride. No, no, Leicester at home. Do you fancy them to get through this game? I think Leicester are just have better players on the on the night. Yeah, they could put them through. To be honest, um, I don't I don't watch none of the first league. To be honest, um, but I think Leicester, I think Friday Madison, I think they'll, they'll get through. Happy days. And the, the draw for that will be on Friday morning as well for anyone that's watching. Um, if United Spurs, Leicester Arsenal, all be free with Rangers, that will be interesting. 
Um, you would feel that because it's an open draw, if all them teams were to get through, they're bound to be at least one. One of them um, ties happening. But uh, Emma, thanks for coming on. Really enjoyed the chat. Some really good insight. Um, and hopefully finds their luck on a bit of and he's can turn the form around this week. Um, away to Sheffield United. It's, it's, a, it's a game you feel like it's, well, on paper they should win, but it'll be no easy game as well, I suppose, when you're on a, kind of, on a, on a bad run. But uh, no, great to have you on. And I'll definitely watch you. Thanks very much. Good man. Thanks for coming on.